Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again, and we are back in the beginner series, working our way through the main edit mode menu. In this video, we will be working with the tools submenu. There are many tools submenus in Dreams, and this series will eventually cover them all, but for now, let's just talk about those that can be accessed directly from the main edit menu. The first tool we'll cover is the Move tool. This is likely the tool you have used most and will use most. Let's go through our options one by one. The first thing you can do with the Move tool is grab something. Grab by pressing and holding R2. Once you have grabbed a thing, you have options like moving it throughout the scene. You can do this with either the motion controls or the thumbsticks, and that also depends on the control scheme you've chosen. With the DS4, I highly recommend the motion controls. If you're having issues with the scheme, check out my video in the card. The next thing you can do is rotate an object. You do this by pressing and holding L2. Same thing, you can then move the thing either with the motion controls or the thumbsticks. The rotation of an object changes based on your camera position relative to it. If your camera position is flatter or less than 45 degrees relative to the object, right or left on the right thumbstick will roll the object, and right or left on the left thumbstick will yaw the object. If your view is higher up or greater than 45 degrees relative, those situations reverse. So for instance, right or left on the right thumbstick will now yaw. In both cases, up or down on either thumbstick will pitch the object with the left thumbstick being slightly faster. The motion controls can very easily give you difficulty with L2 held because the thing you've grabbed tends to wander as your hands and wrists move very slightly. Here's a tip. If you tap one of the thumbsticks very lightly right after holding L2, it will lock out the motion controls and you will only be able to rotate with the thumbsticks until you release L2. How you rotate with L2 also depends on where you grab an object. If you grab a thing near its center, it will rotate around the grab point near the center. If you grab a thing on the edge, it will rotate it around the edge. If you press and hold L1 and then press and hold R2, you will create a clone of an object. That clone will then be placed when you release R2. You can scale an object by pressing up or down on the D-pad. Important to note that you do not need to grab an object to do this. All you have to do is hover the imp over it until it highlights. You can also delete an object without grabbing it. You can do this by hovering the imp over your object and pressing the triangle button. Throughout this video, you've likely seen things reappearing and that is happening through the use of the undo and redo buttons, which are left and right on the D-pad respectively. If you press cross while hovering over an object, you will select it and that selection gives you some options on the right hand side. One is delete. But since delete is a single button press shortcut of triangle, you will never use this. Use the shortcut instead. The next is an option to open the object's tweak menu. There is also a shortcut for this. This is press and hold L1 and press square. Don't use the selected object menu option. Learn and use the shortcut. Same with closing menus. Get used to the shortcut of L1 and circle. The next option is Edit Sculpture and that will bring you into Sculpture Mode for that object. This is another function with a shortcut which is L1 and Cross and you should use that instead of this. And lastly in the selected menu we have something more useful, Save as New Creation. This object allows you to select a thing in an element or scene and then save it as a separate thing. You can choose the type of thing you want to save it as. However, you have to be aware that the new thing will be saved as a remix of the original and in order to publish the new thing, the old thing it comes from must also be published. You can also select more than one object and that brings up the option to group them. That puts them all in a sort of invisible bag. You can also multi-select items by holding cross and dragging your imp over them. Once the objects are in a group, you can scope into the group by hovering over it, holding L1, and pressing cross. This basically takes you inside of the invisible bag where you can access the things inside it individually. You can also ungroup things and remove the invisible bag from the scene. 
That's enough of the move tool, let's talk about the stretch tool now. In edit mode, the stretch tool will act upon up to two objects that are between two connectors. The place you most naturally find this is within puppets because every joint in a puppet is a connector. Therefore, all parts of a puppet are between connectors except for the head, hands, and tips of the feet. So if you scope into a puppet by hovering over it, holding L1 and pressing cross, you will have access to all of the connectors and individual sculptures that make up a puppet. You stretch apart by pulling on the sculptures on either side of the connectors it sits between. How they stretch depends on where you pull and the rules are slightly nuanced, so I'd recommend trying your hand at this rather than listening to me describe it in detail. You can also do this purposefully by setting up sculptures between connectors manually. The first sculpture acts as the parent, the second is the child. So connect to the outside object first and place the other end on the thing you want to stretch. The second connector is connected to the object to stretch as a parent and the other outside object is its child. To stretch the middle object, you will need the stretch tool on and then pull the third object. You will only be able to stretch like this in one dimension at a time. It's important to note that things do not stretch uniformly. The edits within the sculpture shift according to the position relative to the center of the sculpture. So things further from the center in the direction of the stretch will move more. You can see that with this tiling piece I've made, in its normal state, the edges on all four sides will line up with clones of itself perfectly, but when we stretch it, that quality is destroyed. A quick real-world example, let's say you want to make a tree taller, but you don't want to scale it and make it larger. You can stretch it instead. Up next we have the clone tool. The basic function of the clone tool is also accomplished by the shortcut I mentioned earlier of holding L1, pressing and holding R2, positioning the clone, and then releasing R2. So use the shortcut. Where things get interesting with the clone tool is when live clone is ticked on the right hand side of the screen. Here we have four of the same sculpture, but the copy on the lower right is not a live clone. If we go into sculpture mode on one of the live clones and make changes, those changes will show up in all of the live clones. You can do this with any one of them. It doesn't matter which one you pick. And even though it was originally the same sculpture, since the one on the lower right is not a live clone, it is not affected. Incidentally, you can remove the live clone state from any sculpture that has it by hovering over that sculpture and pressing triangle while using the clone tool. If you're not, you'll just delete it. The tweak tool opens an object's tweak menu. This function is a shortcut which is hold L1 and press square, so use the shortcut and not the tool. Same goes for the delete tool, don't use it, use the shortcut of hovering over and pressing triangle instead. With the hide tool, you can make it so that you can't see something in edit. This is not the same as making something invisible. For one thing, an invisible object in edit mode is invisible in play mode as well. Not so for hidden stuff. Also, hidden stuff cannot be made visible by toggling visibility in the main menu show hide option. You can only activate or deactivate the hidden quality with the hide tool. This is very handy for when you have sculptures clustered tightly together and are having a hard time reaching or selecting a certain thing. You can use hide by tapping R2 on individual sculptures, or you can hold R2 and multi-select by dragging your imp across the sculptures. Once you exit the hide tool, those things will no longer be visible in edit unless you go back into the hide tool or remove the hide quality from them with the hide tool. But again, the visibility of those things in play mode is not affected. 
The freeze tool allows you to prevent changes from being made to an object. So let's say you've placed something perfectly or set up all the sliders in a tweak menu exactly the way you want. You can freeze the thing and that will keep it from being moved or altered in any way. The only exception in edit mode is that the object will still be acted upon by the physics engine with time running, which is accomplished by clicking R3. Just like the hide tool, things remain frozen until they are unfrozen with the freeze tool. Last but not least is the sculpture detail tool. This is a pretty complex tool and I have covered it in parts in many videos. I suggest looking into my short series on graphics thermo. The first of three videos on the subject is in the card. The Sculpture Detail tool allows you to alter the rendering fidelity of an object either to achieve a certain style, shape, or to change graphics cost. You can use the tool to either reduce or increase sculpture detail. While in the tool, you can toggle between the two either with a button on the right hand side or by pressing triangle. Of interest is the other button on the right, Consider Scale and the shortcut of L1 plus R2 to reduce the most detailed object in the scene. The combination of these two allows you to normalize scene sculpture detail either absolutely or by scale without wandering around the scene and pressing a button a million times. So in this video we covered quite a bit from basic controls to some nuances in tools that many people don't use but they all fit in the tools submenu of the Dreams main edit menu. Tons more to talk about in this series. Since modes is a huge subject that will likely require multiple videos of its own, I'm going to skip that for now and move on to the animate submenu next. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you in the Dreamiverse.